Bank is Powerhouse Pan Waters, a Soul Advantage Mobile Notary, and Maryland Coins Notary Show. If you haven't already, go subscribe to our Maryland Coins Notary Show on YouTube and become one of our friends on our Facebook group of Maryland Coins. But my guest today is Miss Jay Henson down in Florida. I saw her on TikTok and YouTube, and I knew she just had to be one of our guests. She's going to give us her journey and also some great nuggets on field inspection and mystery shopping. All right, Jay Henson, just take it away. All right. Well, uh, we're talking about field inspections and mystery shopping. You know, um, I got, got started with that with field inspections about seven, almost eight years ago. And it was like uh, when the housing market, cra ha ha <clears throat> housing market crashed, you know, it was like a perfect time right then, you know, um, but I got into that, a friend introduced me to it because I was doing automotive work. I was a mechanic. So I was started doing field inspections part-time and I realized I was like, wow, this is pretty easy. You know, this was pretty easy money. You just go out and take pictures of property. And uh, so I started doing it and, and doing it part-time. And then I finally said, I'm going to do this full-time. So since then I've been doing it full-time for since then, since for almost eight years now. Wait a minute, so, so you was a, you are still a mechanic? Because I do need my oil change and all of that other great stuff. Or you don't uh, do that anymore. I was a mechanic. <laughs> I was an automotive mechanic for fifteen years. Uh, oh, but yeah. I, I I lay I laid my wrenches down. Oh, all I do. I only do my personal stuff, and I really don't like doing that anymore. But you know, I'd rather pay somebody. But yeah, I so. <laughs> So yeah, I started, I've been doing it for eight years. I've been in field inspections for eight years. You know, I started off in the residential segment. Um, you know, I was turning a hundred houses a day and they were paying like four to $10 a house. Mm -hmm. and, uh, then I started moving into commercial inspections because I started getting a little burnt out on the residential side. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wanted to slow myself down. So I moved into to the commercial side of it. Um, you know, the commercial side paid better and I didn't mm -hmm. have to work as much, you know, so I enjoyed that. And then I started moving into the insurance inspections, um, oh. which is another easy, you know, easy inspections, you know, you some, but, you know, you, you kind of move through those cycles once you start gaining experience, you know, learning the industry and learning that all of them are pretty much, you know, the same other than a few differences you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, different companies require. So, you know, but once you get your feet wet with field inspections, I mean, it's like easy peasy, you know, so that's pretty much my journey with field inspections. I'm still doing it today. You know, I, I love it. I work when I want to and, and, you know, I just, so, do you have to, so I've seen people with certificates. So do you have to be certified or that's just um, credentials that people may want to see now? Um, as I've never been certified, okay. I never had to gain any credentials. I didn't need any experience, no special skills, no special training, you know, none of that stuff. You know, all I needed to do was pay attention to details and know how to uh, follow instructions. All right. You know? So if this is your first time here, we are very interactive. So you can just ask Jay just questions. just like I'm asking Jay questions. So I see a lot of you on mute, but if you hear some great things from her and you ready to ask those questions, just go ahead and ask them, okay? Just like me. Okay, yeah, Jay, other, back to you. Sorry. Yeah, the other segment that I started getting into was mystery shopping, too. I mean, which is great gig work. I mean, um, I looked at mystery shopping a few years ago, but I didn't quite understand or, you know, how to get into it. And, um, but I started just maybe about a year or so. I've been doing mystery shopping. And I was like, man, this is easy, too. You know, get paid to shop and eat. I mean, who doesn't want that? Oh, yeah. I saw you eating on something. Where were you that day? You Probably were five, something. guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was five. It actually was five, guys. <laughs> That's your favorite mystery shopping place, I guess. Well, yeah, it was one of my favorites, you know. But, you know, the company, one of the companies that I was doing work for, they start, kept sending me to Sonic. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I went like to them. Sonic like 10 times. I'm like, I'm tired of Sonic. I don't want to do Sonic anymore. So I started turning down that work. And I'm like, I don't want to do Sonic anymore. Send me something else, you know. 
you know, so I started doing five guys, mattress firms, you know, places like that. So I just started doing that a little bit and uh, start, you know, it's just extra ways just to put money in your pocket. So back, <clears throat> sorry, back to field inspection, you said turning. So exactly what does that mean in our world? Because we don't know what that means. You said what? What did turning, I say? You said, you said something about turning. Turning? Uh, oh, when Lord. I, turning. <laughs> I heard you myself. I said turning? So let me say it a different way. So what's the process of becoming a field inspector? Do you have to uh, do an um, application? And then what's the actual process once you go? What actually is field inspection? Gotcha. Well, <clears throat> field inspections is just when you go out and assess, photograph, you know, a piece of property, it can be a home, it can be uh, equipment, it can be just about any, any piece of property, you know? When you go out and you just assess the property, you complete a short survey and you take pictures of it. That's pretty much what it is. And <clears throat> the way that you become a field inspector is, you know, there's different ways because there's so many companies out there, but the thing about it is not many people know what companies to go with and know mm -hmm. how to find these companies because these companies don't put out, they rarely put out job listings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might find one or two that have a job listing out there, but um, basically once you find these companies, you just apply to them. It's, I mean, it's just like applying for a regular job. You know? So they're and, free. Yes, I'm totally free. Totally if it's free. free it's for me, let me tell you, that's my slogan. Because, you know, there's some places, because we most of us that's on here are notaries. And so we go through something called a signing agent. And some of those signing agents actually make people pay to be on their list. Wow, really? So, so there's an application fee, but there are some that are free. So that's why I wanted to know if that was free. Right. And see, I do. I mean, I, I don't, I've never paid to... Um, do field inspections, you know, mm -hmm. I just purchase whatever equipment I might need, but there's really no special equipment that's, uh, that's necessary. You use a smartphone or your a camera and you go out to a site and, and, and uh, photograph it, uh, photograph whatever property they're asking you to photograph. But I mean, you just go to these companies once you find them and apply to them and wait to see if they approve you. You know, a lot of a lot of the uh, companies that I share, like on TikTok and things like that, those are pretty much the easiest ones to get on with. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, like one company, they just if you know how to follow instructions and, and, and pay attention to details, they they give you a training video and tell you exactly they want you to send in a sample set. So basically your sample set of photos is your interview. Mm -hmm. because they want to see if you know how to follow instructions but they also give you a training video showing you exactly what to do so it's like so, go ahead so it's like i mean everything is self-explanatory and they pay good you know and and <clears throat> that was one of the things that i enjoyed about them because i mean there's just different things sometimes it's a boat sometimes it's a vehicle sometimes it's a home you know there's different things there's, there's so so much variety out there that they're sending people out to have inspected i think i understand so, right yeah 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 so my question, question is i, I have hold a on question. go ahead Kasha. hi jay hi how are you hi. I'm good. So my question is, I have, I've already applied to um, a few companies that I found, but it seems like they're all like um, in other states. And also I've heard from others that a lot of companies are not legit. So anything to maybe look out for, um, like to, how can you tell whether or not co companies are legit? Like do they, have you had issues where companies haven't paid you? Uh, no, never. I've never had that. Uh, okay. Never had that experience. Um, I mean, I haven't run into any non-legit companies that don't pay you. Um, however, okay. you know, it, it's funny that it's you know not funny, but uh, coincidence that you asked that because I used to work for a company called RSB Field Services, and I re recently mm -hmm. read an article how 
this person, this company was in trouble. Um, oh, wow. So, and wasn't paying their employees. But during the time I was working for the company, I was paid every week. You know, every, you know, every twice a month, wherever that pay period went, I believe it was twice a month. And I was paid on time. Mm -hmm. But I was turning a lot of work for this, for this company. I mean, doing uh, 3,000 jobs a month. You know, so, oh, but, wow. but I haven't there. I mean, I would just suggest that you maybe kind of Google the company to, a little bit to make sure there's no, um, no reviews out there saying that they didn't, they didn't get paid and was late paying and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, but for the most part, okay. I haven't run into any companies that wasn't legit. Okay. And right How now, you know, well, it's just through experience, through, you know, uh, word of mouth, things like that, because, you know, I'm listening to other uh, field inspectors out there when I see them out in the field sometimes, and they, you know, share with me their companies that they work for. So I, you know, check into them and things like that. But another great source is Sophie. Uh, uh, so that's who uh, I oh, with. Say again. That's with uh, Richard Law. I register with him, Richard Law. Yes, that is that is he is a uh, part of the reason I started getting in commercial inspections. Um, I purchased his uh, what was it? His National Field Inspections Inspector Guide or list, and so mm -hmm. these were all reputable companies. You know, so I just started going through that book and start applying to these different companies. And, you know, that's that's really how I started really getting into more of the different types of inspections. So, you know, if, okay. if Sophie is a great resource to to talk to, to, uh, you know, check out the products and things like that. Uh, and I know a lot of his I know a lot of his uh, products, they're like written manuals and things like that, but they help you know, in different situations. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Is that S-O-F-I? Is that what you're saying? Yep, S-O-F-I, Society of Field Inspectors. Field Inspectors. Mm -hmm. Yep. Kasha, you got some more questions? I know she does. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'll give someone else a chance. <laughs> Anybody else? I, I do. I have a question. Um, do you get reim reimbursed for gas or how does that work when you go to the different um, locations? Each company is going to be different. Um, uh, most of the residential stuff, uh, like residential mortgage inspections, you don't get reimbursed. Everything is on you because you're 1099. So everything is on you um, for as far as your expenses. So you don't get any type of reimbursement like that. Um, mm -hmm. One company that I work for doing commercial inspections, uh, they pay me for all of my time. From the time I leave my house till I get to the job site, you know, how long I was at the job site, how long it took me to get back home, and uh, also mileage, and how long it takes me to upload my work. And it's all pretty much based on an honor system because you're, you, you build, basically put your billing information in and you bill them. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you send them an invoice. Pretty much. And it's it's basically done on each 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 job order. So you just, you know, put in your time that, you know, that you were gone from and the time that you were on site and the time that it took you to process and, and and your mileage. How many miles did it take you to get there and back home? Okay. So they, they pretty much they have a calculation where they compensate you for all of that. And then the other question that I have is, do you have to get any type of um, E&O insurance or do you, do you have anything like if you make a mistake or anything like that? I guess I guess, like you said, if, as long as you uh, listen to instructions and pay attention. Well, but, most, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, most companies like in the residential in the mortgage sec uh, sector, um, you're usually covered through the company. As a you know, and being, even being an independent contractor, you're usually covered, so you don't you're not required to carry an ENO. The only time that I found that you're required to carry an ENO is if you're planning on running it as a business and hiring out people. 
you know, hiring people to perform uh, subcontractors and things like that. And that way you're covered and your people that you hire are covered. Okay. But I've never had to have, you know, never, never picked it up before. And so just so I'm clear, so you do field inspections, you do mortgage inspections, and you also said insurance inspections. Okay, field inspections encompasses it all because field inspections will encompass notary, you know, and things like that. So uh, what I do is uh, the residential mortgage. I would like, I, I'm not so much that anymore, but I was doing residential mortgage, commercial, I'm doing commercial inspections, insurance inspections, and um, BPOs, uh, but it's just the photographs for BPOs, not the yeah, whole BPO. Uh, the broker price opinion. Okay. That's uh, okay. in the real estate thing where they evaluate the home and or based on the pictures, you know. <clears throat> and they create some. I, I don't know a whole lot about BPO when it gets into the technical part of it. Okay. I'm gonna be honest, you know, because I just go out and take the pictures and I just send my pictures in and let whoever else take care of the rest of the BPO report, you know. So okay. I don't know what they do. But these are all on this when you go out to um with these different companies, you could get a multiple of different jobs. So you could okay. get a okay. Mm -hmm. With with uh, with the residential mortgage inspections, a lot of times they will send bulk work. Like um, they will send maybe just just an example. They may send you 300 orders at one time and they have to be done by different due dates. You know, so you do them based on the due dates or however you want to do them as long as they're done before the due date is up. And it was usually, I think, three to five days, uh, the time frame for them. Mm -hmm. So... You know, so they kind of give you bulk inspections. Now, when you get into like the commercial and the insurance stuff, those kind of fluctuate. It's not bulk. It's just whenever they come in, you might get one, you might get five. You know, right now I've probably got 12 insurance inspections sitting in my queue, you know, because all of them require these, the most of the commercial and insurance stuff require you to set an appointment to go out to a location. So... <clears throat> You know, all of them are just a little bit different. And, you know, I, I'd rather set appointments and, you know, basically work on my time. Okay. So the insurance is like if somebody files a claim with their insurance company, you're the one that go out and take a look and take pictures of whatever they... Uh, no. Okay. Not exactly. Uh, with the insurance inspections, um, basically, I'm going out because this person has a policy and maybe the policy is being renewed. <clears throat> so they want to make sure that there's no hazards, you know, to the to safety to the public, you know, and make sure fire extinguishers are up to date, you know, things like that. So I go out to, you know, take pictures and verify the fire extinguishers. If, if there's a restaurant, make sure the cooking equipment, make sure, you know, the the fire suppression system on the cooking system is working, you know, or within date, uh, not working, but just make sure it's, everything's properly tagged, exit signs, lit, and things like that. So I just photograph those things and then I create a report at the end. I just started really getting into insurance inspection. So it's still a learning curve for me as, as far as the report goes and what's expected. But um, so far it's been pretty easy. I've probably done about 15 of them so far. So, but so far they're pretty easy. So I, I haven't shared a whole lot about the insurance stuff because I'm still learning it myself. But you know more than we do, so that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, you still got something to share. You know, we don't know. So I got a question. So you know, I'm so I have an Android. So do they require you to have an iPhone or a specific type of technology to take these pictures? No. Um, no, most of them, most people, some, some companies have apps that you can use that you can either download on Apple or Android. I'm an Android user. Um, so I'm team Android. Uh, Yay, <laughs> but, right. somebody on my team, dang it. <laughs> but, you know, I, me personally, I don't like using any of the apps. You know, I like using my Nikon little camera, you know, my little snap and shoot camera, point and shoot. 
you know, and then I take my SD card and upload my uh, photos from my computer or my phone, depending on if I'm out in the field or something. But it just, for me, you know, because everybody's got to find their own groove on how they like to do things. And for me to hold a phone, trying to take a picture and, you know, trying to and then I maybe have the navigation going and all kinds of stuff is going on on the phone, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't I don't care to use a phone. I'd rather use a separate GPS or a separate camera, you know, things like that, because phone calls come in. And I'm trying to say if I'm on a bankruptcy job, you know, we cannot make contact with anybody on a, on you know, when it's a bankruptcy order. So, you know, mm-hmm. I might be trying to snap a picture and somebody finna and somebody calling my phone i'm like (laughs) i'm trying not i'm trying to be discreet (laughs) (laughs) it blew blew your cover (laughs) right 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 i'm like oh man i gotta drive by and 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 try it again you know so (laughs) you know so that's the reason why i personally just like using standalone equipment i mean but i mean you can use your phone it works perfectly with the phone Mm-hmm. Oh. so do you have any like scary stories you want to tell us like oh places you feel like you should never go again uh, uh downtown Atlanta <laughs> <laughs> give us one of those stories because I know we always want to tell you the good side of things but just yeah, give us yes, I, you things. know I'm you know I'm an open book and you know I like the people like to like them to know the real deal you know like yeah, yeah. Um, I went, I was doing residential inspections. So, you know, with residential inspections, you got to be cautious uh, because you, sometimes you do interior inspections for them too mm. at, at a vacant home. And so I was in downtown Atlanta, pretty rough area. I'll just say no. that. A pretty rough area. So I pull up to a house, actually park, parked across the street. And it was an interior inspection. So I'm walking up to the house and I'm feeling a little funny, you mm. know, you know, but I said, okay, you know, I'm looking around cause I did the outside. It's got bars on the windows. Uh, you know, all the windows are closed. All the doors are locked and closed. I'm like, okay. You know, because they provide you keys for mm. each of the, all the vacant properties. <clears throat> so I said, okay, I go inside, you know, I was still a little nervous. But I unlock the door and kind of peek in and, you know, I kind of see some squatter stuff, you know, oh. trash and stuff like that. I'm like, mm, this ain't looking mm-hmm. real good. So I'm like, okay, I'm still being brave, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I open up the door a little more and as I open up the door, you can see straight down the hallway to the bedrooms. Mm-hmm. And from my experience, you know, if it's a vacant house, usually all the bedroom doors are open. <laughs> all the bedroom doors were closed uh, I'm like you know I'm kind of you know easing my way in there so I I knocked at one of the doors I was like hello they was like yeah I was like <laughs> <laughs> have a good day you know, by, the time, by the time this dude by the time this dude got to the door I was already across the street in my car <laughs> I ain't fooling around with y'all jokers, you know. <laughs> Not today, it ain't worth it. You know, so you know, I I, I used to carry a, a I I bought a really strong the strongest taser because I'm not really into uh, carrying a pistol or anything like that. So I bought the strongest taser I could have. And I just carried that along with me for like dogs and things like that, because I had a pit bull come try to come at me too. You know, oh, a neighbor's oh, pit bull. You oh. know, so it's some things you have to be cautious about, especially in different neighborhoods. But for the most part, I mean, I didn't run into too many problems. Of course, you had the, uh, you know, the little issues like, you know, bugs, you know, um, here's another real quick story, if you don't mind. (laughs) I had had taken my daughter out with me one day because she really wanted to go with me. So I was like, all right, Mm -hmm. come on. And so only time, the first and only time she ever went out with me because uh, we both ended up with fleas. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> we went into a house. We went into a house flea-free and came back out. I mean, the fleas that were on us was ridiculous. 
Oh, that would have been good. Yeah. Luckily, I had flea control and stuff in my trunk, and I'm swearing because I didn't realize it until we sat back in the car. And I'm like, oh shoot, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm like, jumped out the car. I'm like, get out, get out. You know, spraying, spraying us both down with flea, uh, flea stuff and, and bug killer. I'm like, uh, and she was like, I ain't never going out with you again. I wouldn't either. It would have been my last day. First and last. <laughs> now, I would have shook it off. But, you know, that is kind of disgusting. You, you just be like, even though the bugs ain't even on you anymore, you still be scratching. I mean, right, I'm right, right. You know, yeah. so you know, you you got your you got your good parts and you got your bad parts to uh to the residential side. I'm st strictly speaking the mortgage side of this, um, at, all right now. You know, because you know you you know because you run into some pretty gross houses, and you run into some pretty nice houses. So mm -hmm. you know, you just have to you know prepare yourself. You know, make sure you have the right stuff with you, bug spray, you know, all kinds of, you know, little stuff with you, hand sanitizer, gloves, you know, and that's what I did, you know, because you never know what you're going to run into. That's true. So do you have to wear your little reflective vest? What do you normally wear on your little field inspection? Your clothes. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for, for my for my, for my commercial inspections and some some of my uh, uh for my insurance inspections and some of my commercial inspections, I might put on a collared shirt. Mm, okay. Um, it might be just a polo or something like that, but for the most part, you know, I'm in shorts, maybe some jeans or something like that. Mm -hmm. just, just regular attire. You know, I don't get all dressed up or all fancy, but I also don't go out all, you know, with uh, looking, you know, with holy clothes and things like that. Because you got to remember that, you know, you're representing another company as well. So you got to make yourself presentable and, and you might meet homeowners, uh, business owners or, you know, and things like that. So, you know, you want to, you know, look the part pretty much. And I say that because, you know, sometimes when we're not in our, what people consider our neighborhoods, do you, have you ever ran into a Karen or a Bob yet? So sometimes you have to dress a certain way or be badged up or, you know, all something that looks like. All the time. Huh? And I, all yeah. the time. You know, well, not all the time. You know, I, I was running into a bunch of Karens, people calling the police on me. You know, you know it doesn't matter. I'm like, you can call the police. I have every right to be here. You know, I'm like, I, I'm, I wasn't you know, uh, moved by them calling yeah. the police. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, do what you need to do because they're wondering why I'm in a vacant house and things exactly. like that. You know, I'm sitting, I was actually finished up a house uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was finishing up a house and a uh, guy across the street says, why are you sitting in front of my house? Uh. I'm like, I'm working. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, me, I, I don't know. People, sometimes people can kind of rub me the wrong way. And, you know, I try to, you know, I try to keep it friendly, but I'm like, don't, <laughs> don't, don't come up to me like that. You know, don't, don't, don't approach me like that. But, you know, what you doing? Why, why are you sitting in front of my house? I'm like, I'm working. It's like, well, you sitting in front of my house. I'm like, it's a public street. Right. <laughs> exactly. What do you want me to do? <laughs> so, you know, I just, have people carry on you know i try to i try to treat them with res you know well i do treat them with respect regardless if they're mm -hmm. going regardless of how their attitude is with me you know because you know you never know how people are going to react that's true and just be cautious of that all right but i only really ran more into that with the, with the res on the residential side Oh, okay. You know, that's I kind of, I kind of got tired of that too. So you know, that's the reason why I moved into commercial and and, and insurance because they expected me. I, I've made a call. Most times they're expecting me. Right. Know, so it makes it a little easier, and you don't have to deal with those kind of people. True. You had a question, Kasha? Yes, I did. So, uh, if you can guesstimate, um, Jay, like between your field inspections and your um, mystery shopping. Mm -hmm. What can you guess to me, like um, the amount of workload that one would have to take to do full time? 
Well, I mean, you know, the mystery shopping stuff, I mean, you can make some really good money on, at it. You know, it depends on, depends on the company and what their pay rate is, you know, because the mystery shopping fluctuates with the pay. So, mm-hmm. you know, most of my stuff have come from the commercial commercial stuff. So let me can, repeat your question again, because I just lost it. <laughs> Join the club, girl. Join the club. I do it all the time. Get used to it. <laughs> please, hey, you know, please. How much of a me. workload? <laughs> no problem. How much of a workload would one have to take on to full time to do this well, full time? Everybody's gonna be different because everybody has their. You know, everybody has. You know, you know me myself. You know, some some. One person might be single. One person might have a family of four, you know, so it just really depends. Yeah. Okay. You know, me, you know, I've worked for five different companies. So it, it constantly keeps bringing me work in, you know, so it's a constant flow of work for me. Um, you know, depending on the workload that each company has, you know, because, and it also depends on the, where you are, where you're located. Because I live in a rural area of Florida, but I'm constantly busy. But the, if uh, a lot of the city areas have a lot more work, so that's okay. also that's also a factor in that. But you know, depending on how much you need a month, then mm-hmm. you can kind of you can kind of gauge that. But I can't really tell how much everybody needs a month. You know, me myself, yeah. I only need three grand a month. Okay, you said you that. Know, so that- um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you no. Said no. There was a company. That, you said there was a company that sends you bulk work, like about 300 orders to be due in like five days. Is that really possible? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Once you once you start getting into a groove of it, you know, my last couple of years of doing the residential stuff. I mean, I'm a. I re- I rarely got out of my car. <laughs> don't tell nobody that. that's a plus <laughs> don't tell nobody that but everybody gonna see now but anyway <laughs> no, I, but, <laughs> you know, I, I rarely got out of my car but you know I was doing 100 houses a day you know I was doing anywhere from uh, mm-hmm. 50 to 100 houses a day you know and it's not that you know because mm. they may send 300 you know they may send like 100 one day and then maybe 50 another day, the next day, maybe 25 the next day. So, you know, you, you, it may not be 300 all at one time. So your due dates are going okay. to be kind of staggered. Okay. So you can kind of, you know, make your route. The way that I, you know, did it was I routed one particular area. And anything that I could do in that area, I went ahead and did. And then I moved on to the next area and things like that in okay. order to uh, keep the flow going. Okay, and when you did your numbers at the end of the day or at the end of the week or whenever you do your numbers, um, the amount you spent on time. Um, uh, you, you're breaking up just a little bit. You broke up on that last part. She wants to know, like if you so said, you made the end of the week. Or, Go ahead, Kasha. We just couldn't hear you. Okay. Um, I was saying that at the end of the week or the end of the day or whenever you did your numbers, whenever you did the math, mm-hmm. um, what you spend on time and gas versus what they paid you, did it make sense? Like, was it beneficial to you or does yes. that kind of accumulate over time? Okay. It was beneficial to me, you know, um, because I was making, I mean, like one month, you know, I bring in four grand a month you know, or five grand, you know, and I was probably spending, probably spending a grand in gas, you know, depending on the gas price. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I got to consider my maintenance too, but, you know, my maintenance, you know, is is kind of a, uh, you know, I dealt with later on, but when Mm -hmm. I calculated everything, you know, it was well worth it for me, you know, because I was still in profit. I mean, I wasn't losing money. So can you say it's like maybe 40 hours a month you're doing? 
totally or more. You said, say that one more how time. Many hours, how many hours a month? You know, the traditional job is 40 hours a week. How many hours a month do you think you do making um, money, good money? When I was doing the residential stuff, I was out there hustling from sun up to sundown. You was hustling. <laughs> okay. I, I was out there hustling and because I was like money. motivated to get out there and because I needed this to happen. You know, so I was I spent a lot of time on the road. I spent a lot of yeah. time. You know, um, so that it's more than 40 hours. <laughs> so yeah. But now, you know, I think I I took off last week, you know, uh, I probably take off half of this week, you know, I'm like, you know, I probably work 10 hours a week now, if that, you know, just depends, just depends on, you know, how much work I have and, and things like that, how much work I want to schedule, you know, mm -hmm. you know, for my week, but uh, probably 10 to 20 hours a week. I would say I'm that I'm doing right now, and I'm That's bringing good. it up to, you know, make it work for me. I think that was part of her question too. She want to know all the details, so there's nothing wrong with that. I told you, Kasha, nothing wrong with that. I love questions. When I put it out there, Kasha was the first one who was like, she was ready to go that day. She probably would have wanted me to interview the day that I posted it. But um, so I'm so glad and thankful I everybody. <laughs> So everybody who just joined, this is Marilyn Coins. My special guest today is Jay Henson. She's talking to us about field inspection, a little bit about mystery shop and shopping, and just answering our question. And Kasha um, is her is our co-host today because Kasha got all the questions, which is I love. Go Kasha, go Kasha. <laughs> Kasha is the co-host of the day. Um, but Gigi and I see Tanya and all the rest of y'all who are here, Damien and um. Who is that? Marlene. I see all of y'all. So you're welcome to also come in and answer some questions. Or we're just going to let Kasha just take it away for the day. Okay? No, all right. I can share. I can share. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just playing with you, Kasha. You know I don't care. <laughs> I welcome it. So if you, have, if you are new and you have not joined our Facebook group, we have Marilyn Coins and also the Marilyn Coins Notary Show, which is now on YouTube. And Jay, you, got, you can tell us your information unless you want to wait to the end. Tell it whenever, you know. Wait till the end. Okay, well, tell whatever. Whatever you want. <laughs> tell me what you want. Go ahead and tell me you can find you and what I know you have other things you can't that you do offer. So I we're welcome to you're welcome to share that now. Well, what I've been offering to people is, you know, um, I provide these different companies, a list of companies, um, uh, from mystery shopping to different field inspection companies that I've either worked for or that I know that is legit. Um, so I offer people a free list of different companies that they can go apply to. And, you know, I also uh, offer the free training just to uh, teach the people a little bit about the different types of field inspections um, so that they can have an idea of exactly, you know, what field inspections are. And, um, but yeah, um, I can, they can uh, go to jcreatingwealth.com. Uh, slash field inspections and get a free list of uh, uh, companies that I have. I'm always updating that list with other companies that I come across <clears throat> that people can just, you know, go to the company and sign up with them. Uh, and I also have uh, just J, not J-A-Y, just J. Oh, okay, my bad. Go ahead. Okay, there you go. There you go. Wait, I'm just, I'm distracting you. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> but I also offer uh, paid training uh, for people who want to get more in depth and want to learn, um, you know, the different steps and different inspection types, how to complete different inspection types, um, how to complete commercial inspections, and things like that. Um, so that's 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 part of the paid training, but. People, I mean, the training is not really necessary. You know, that's only for people who's just not sure and just want a little guidance because I'm always there trying to help people out. Um, so that's the reason why I created the training for, for people. But I mean, it's not necessary to do the training. Everything can be done on your own. You know, it's just the point of 
learning the stuff, knowing who to look for, knowing what companies to sign up with, because some companies will have mortgage inspections, will have commercial inspections. Um, I've, I've ran across issues where people were trying to do it on their, on their own and they were applying for insurance inspections. Mm. And they had no idea how to do, complete an insurance inspection because insurance inspections require you to take measurements and things like that. So, you know, uh, so they were like, well, wh what am I looking for? What am I looking for? So I also created, I hadn't put that out yet, but I also created another training on teaching people how to choose the right hiring firm, mm. you know, because some companies will have, will encompass all those inspections, but, you know, you got to know what you're applying for, you know, because sometimes they may ask you what, you know, what uh, services do you offer? So, <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah, so. That's, that's what I got, jcreatingwealth.com slash field inspections. You can find the training there and uh, also uh, get a, a free list sent to your website. I mean, sent to your email. Once you enter your email and everything, I usually send out your initial email will come with the, uh, the list of the website where you can access the list of companies. I get your emails. Thank you. I do get them. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> they can also find you on TikTok. Don't forget that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's my hot spot right there. <laughs> yes, you can find me on TikTok. At, uh, what's my TikTok handle? Oh, Entrepreneurial Mindset. I'm on TikTok for entre Entrepreneurial Mindset, and I'm also on mm -hmm. Facebook. Cool and and anyway, hey, so. there she everywhere. Yeah, I try to be. I try to be. I'm just trying to spread the word. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. So y'all got about 10 minutes left. So y'all better unmute because you know we are very interactive and Jay has given us some great nuggets. And so if you have any um last minute questions or compliments for her, Go this for is the it. time to come in. Because I see Gigi, uh-huh, Damon, Tanya, Tanya, I'm calling y'all out. Mia O. Kim. Well, Kim asked some questions. Thank you, Kim. You're my co-host today, too. Um, and Damon usually has some great questions, but he usually waits for the ladies to ask first. Oh, such a gentleman. But today, you don't have to be a gentleman today, Damon. Just come on in here and ask some questions <laughs> <laughs> for Jay. So um, what was my question? You made me forget. Anyway, but I appreciate you. Well, I do have one more. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm you're thinking of yours. I do have one more. Go ahead. Uh, so uh, when, <laughs> when you register for these companies, do you suggest um, when using an EIN number versus, I don't know if they ask for socials. Uh, um, they will ask for socials. But do, you, do they ask for that information? Uh, it, yes, they will ask for your social if you're applying and they're doing a background check right then. Uh, and once you get hired, you know, there are some companies will have you go ahead and fill out a W-9 and everything too. Mm -hmm. So there, you know, you're going to need either your social or EIN, but you can use either one. Um, I haven't used an EIN. I've always used my social. But and either I, one, I, I don't have a recommendation for which is better. You know, just depends on how you have your, you know, or have you, how you have your business yeah. up. Okay. And I apologize if you answered this. Do you have to do a background check for each person or they don't need to ask you for a background check? Um, most companies, if you're going into the residential segment of it, the residential mm -hmm. mortgage segment of it, there is a national background check that they do. And usually it costs. Uh, it's called Aspen Grove. And you get a, you receive a, you go through Aspen Grove and they do a criminal background check and things like that. And you'll get a, a ABC number. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 60 bucks a year. So they charge you yearly. Mm -hmm. um, but you get an ABC number. And with that ABC number, you're, you're allowed to do any of the mortgage, mortgage inspections. Oh, that's good. To know. We all had to do a background check for notaries. So they used it and that was $70 a year. Well, yeah. But most of the companies are going to do a background check. You know, mm -hmm. um, I haven't ran into one who haven't, 
So I, I think all of them are going to be doing background checks now. They should go into people's houses. Or companies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you, you, you you don't want somebody who's been, you know, uh, uh, charged with uh, uh, breaking and yeah. entering and stuff like that. <laughs> exactly. You know? um, you're getting a, a page not found. How are you spelling it? Happy Angela. I guess it's better late than never. <laughs> anyway. I seen a question come up. Huh? Was I, was I, did I not see that? Uh, lose the AY. It's just, yeah, it's just J, y'all. Yeah, I'm sorry. She told me. Put it in there, J, because you know I'm slow. And I can't I see. I don't know how to use this. Uh, okay, hold on. J, what, what is it? J what? <laughs> creating? J, J creating wealth. Dot com. Field inspections, yep. With an S or no S? With an S. Hopefully that's the right one, y'all. That's my fault. She told me. Jcreatingwealth.com. Yep, field inspections. With an S. Yep, that's right. That's right, right there. Well, I'm so excited. We got eight minutes, y'all. Y'all got eight minutes with this lovely lady. She didn't give y'all a whole hour of her time. Um, Bring it on. Great nuggets. Um, Deanna just came on, so she don't have her questions unless she has some already. You got some questions, D? Marlene, Mia? No, I don't have any questions. I've done um, secret shopping before, so that's familiar, but the... Um, Field inspections. I was just curious just to hear. So I'm sorry I missed it. I was on another Zoom. Aww. That Zoom wasn't important as this Zoom, but that's okay. I'll get on you later. <laughs> 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 now, Deanna, that's my girl. Um, I met her through Canyon, but we all become a family. Oh, so since we, um, if y'all don't have any more questions, we're going to all ask Jay to come become part of the notary family because that's one thing she's not. Can y'all believe that? Really? All these, right. All I've these been times. thinking about notary. I've been notary. thinking about notary. So. so we need you to stop thinking about it, Jay. And just do it. I got and you. Just do it. Because if you're in Florida, the person you need to connect with is uh, Cynthia Alexander. She's the big time notary person down in Florida. She does um, permit running, which you should. You ever done permit running? You ever heard of it? See, you need to hook up with Savvy. I'm trying to tell you that's your next hustle. He's in Florida. Permit running. Uh, Become a me, notary. I'm <laughs> going to have to write school. this down and you're going to have to text it to me, send it to me, do something. We're going to school you for the next eight minutes. Okay? We're going to school you. So <laughs> Cynthia Alexander down in Florida, she uh, she actually wrote most of the regulations in, in Florida. So she okay. does the permit running. She has um, her own notary business and she also teaches. Um, she has classes. So think about it because the notaries in Maryland, I mean, Florida makes some great money because a lot of things that y'all can do that we can't do here in Maryland. Right. So think about it. Put it on your list. It's already on my list. Oh. <laughs> it's going to get done. It's going to get done. Let, let me, let me, let me, let me get the hang of these insurance inspections first. And okay. Okay. Notary. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Put it on your to-do list. Something to think about because it's really not that much to, um, put into it to start it right okay yeah I was because, wondering I was wondering because I was looking you know I was seeing a lot of the loan signing agents and then I was seeing you know it's funny thing because I was on YouTube and it was like a lot of actually Richard Law told me too that a lot of the notaries were coming over to field inspections and I was like well maybe I should go over there to notary what's going notary. on <laughs> come get their money because exactly that is what they are doing that's one of the big things that they do promote is field inspections. Mm -hmm. That's why we wanted to know from you because we heard it too somewhere. So, hey, yeah, come and get some of that money because you can do it online. Just like you're sitting here talking to us and you got moments that you can sit down and you can do stuff online. You don't even have to go to a person. In Are Florida, you serious? Yeah. Oh, 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 snap. I'm going to get busy. <laughs> It's called remote online notarization. And so that's big time in Florida. So I'm trying to tell you, we're going to talk later. I'll but, have um, the right way. You're going to have to send me this stuff. I'll send it to you. I'll okay. send you it's Ron. I'm going to send you Cynthia Alexander's number. That's the person you need to talk to in, Mar in Florida. 
to learn more about that. She does on she does raw, she does permit running, and she does notary and a couple other things. Okay. But and I don't know if y'all can do fingerprinting. That's something you gotta figure out later. All right, all right, fair enough. Fair enough. So if y'all don't have any more questions, I'm gonna let Jay go because she got things to do. So going once, going twice. See, they trying to be quiet today, Jay. But then again, you know what? Usually when people don't have a lot of questions, that means that you were very transparent and you gave us all the nuggets that we needed to know. So I thank you. It is awesome. I do, I do wanted to say one last thing. I mean, if you come up with questions later, I, I love answering questions. Feel free to message me, you know, get with me um, somehow, TikTok, Facebook, however you want. You know, just feel free to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help you out and direct you in the right direction. All right, gang. So thank, thank you for joining us. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> That's my co-host so today. Jay, Go ahead, thank Sandra. you for giving us your uh-oh, I missed what she said. <laughs> Kasha, you worse than me today. Is that better? Said, go ahead, Kasha. I said thank you for giving us your time. Oh, you're welcome. It's been it's been a, definitely a pleasure. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining Marilyn Coins Notary Show today with my special guest, Jay Henson, on field inspection and mystery shopping. Anything else, Jay? Um, no, I think I, I think I covered everything. <laughs> if you're not a member of our Facebook group, it's Marilyn Coins, or you can be a subscriber on our YouTube, Marilyn Coins Notary Show. And we'll see you next Sunday at 4 p.m. Have a great evening. All right, bye.